All right, let's start off here on number one. Uh, I'll help us out with this one. So on this one, we're going to go ahead and take uh, the, we're going to solve by substitution. We're going to take what y is equal to, and we're going to swap it out right there. Now, there's nothing to distribute here, so I'm just going to write 3x plus 6x squared equals 3. I see that this is a quadratic, so I want to get everything to one side, so I'm going to subtract the 3 over here. I'm also going to rearrange it in standard form, putting the, uh, the x squared first. And uh, I see that everything is divisible by 3, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just divide everything by 3, and so I get 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. And now I'm going to want to factor this, so we're thinking of two numbers, multiply to negative 2 and add to 1, so that would be 2 and negative 1. Uh, however, I do need to use my grouping here since I have the 2x squared right there and the negative 1 right there. And so I'll split this up into negative 1x and plus 2x according to this. And so now I will uh, do my grouping. So this group and that group. The first group, I can only take out x, which leaves me with 2x minus 1. The second group, I can only take out a 1, so that'll leave me with 2x minus 1 as well. And so I get x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, so now I need to split those up and set them equal to 0 individually. So this one will be x plus 1 equals 0, which means if I subtract 1, x equals negative 1. And then uh, this one will be 2x minus 1 equals 0, which would mean if I add the 1, x, 2x equals 1, and then x equals 1 half. However, on these ones for the systems, we need to figure out our y values as well. So I'm going to plug this back in. Uh, I'll go ahead and plug it into 6x squared. So I, I first am going to plug in my negative 1 here. So I'm going to say y equals 6 times negative 1 squared. So y equals 6 times 1. And so y equals 6. Uh, so my first point then would be negative 1 comma 6 because when I plugged in the negative 1, I got out of 6. And then next up, I'm going to plug in my negative, or sorry, my positive one half here. So that would be y equals six times one half squared. Now I got to do PEMDAS here and square my fraction first. So when you square a fraction, just square the top and square the bottom. And then I can go ahead and cross cancel here, dividing those. And so I get y equals three over two. And so my point here would be one half comma three over two for my x comma y value. So those are my two points. All right, number two here. Uh, I would first, I would take this and I would substitute it right there. Um, so this is going to be x plus uh, x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 3. I would then combine like terms and I would actually also minus this 3 over. Um, so it's going to turn that into 0. This will be negative 6. And then I do need to combine these two, giving me a negative 1x. And then the x squared will just go out there. And then we're going to factor uh, and then I'll, I'll let you guys solve it from there. Uh, make sure you find your x's and your y values. All right, so these two, uh, we're just going to solve the system by looking at the graph. So on number four here, it's pretty clear that that and that are our solutions. So this is going to be negative three comma four and uh, also one comma zero. All right, next up here, uh, we're going to do number five. So with this function, we want us to state the vertex. So the vertex, I'm going to do negative B over 2A. Um, that is our formula for finding the uh, vertex, negative B over 2A. So this will be uh, negative 8 over negative 4, and so that comes out to 2. And so now my y value, I'll plug it back in. All right, so now I have to do PEMDAS, so i got to do my uh, exponent first. So that's going to turn that into 4. And then uh, I'll multiply negative 8 plus 16 plus 1. And so y equals 8 plus 1, which is 9. So my answer for part A is... Uh, 2 comma 9. So again, x comma y for a point there. Uh, all right, so part B, the y-intercept is actually really easy to see here. It is uh, 1. It's always that c value. And then um, for part C, uh, write it in vertex form. So for vertex form, the only thing I, I already have my vertex, so that's good. Um, so I am going to refer to that. Um, and I also need to grab, steal the a value here. So a is going to equal negative 2, the same as it was before. So I'm going to say negative 2 times uh, x minus 2 because I always switch the x value of the vertex and then that's squared and then we put the plus 9 from the vertex outside. All right, we can compare this to uh, number 6 here. Uh, on number 6, uh, it first asks us to state the vertex. So that's actually really easy here. Uh, it's just we switch the uh, x value in there but then keep the y value like that and that's it. 
Uh, all right, B says state the y-intercept. I'm actually gonna hold off on that until I do part C. So I'm gonna go ahead and do part C first because once I get it in standard form, it's really easy to see the y-intercept. The y-intercept is not negative five. That's the y-value of the vertex. Um, but it switch it to standard form. I'm gonna write the x plus one twice since it's squared. And then I'm gonna multiply those together with a box. So x plus one, x plus one. So this will give me x squared, and then x, and x, and then 1. So I got 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 5. I'll go ahead and distribute this 2 in there. So that gives me 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 minus 5. And then lastly, we'll just combine like terms. So we get 2x squared plus 4x uh, minus 3. Uh, so that is it in standard form. Uh, and once I have that, I can see that that C value is going to be my answer to part B, and that'll be negative 3. Alternatively, for the y-intercept, we could have plugged in 0 for x and done the PEMDAS. All right, next up, we're going to find the discriminant here, um, and that is B squared minus 4AC. It's really the uh, inside of the radical on the quadratic formula. Uh, so, um, and then once we uh, get that result, if the discriminant is... Uh, positive that's going to be in two real solutions if it is zero that means a uh, one real solution and if the discriminant is negative that means that there are uh, no real solutions which they put as two imaginary solutions so uh, i'll go ahead and do uh i'll do number um yeah i'll do number seven i guess okay so uh this one will do b squared, and b here is negative 6, minus 4 times a is 4, and c is negative 4. Uh, so this will turn into 36, um, and then this will be, uh, let's see, this is negative 16 times negative 4. Um, 4, and then that's a 2, so 64. It'll be plus 64, uh, since that was a negative times a negative, so this will be 100. And so that is positive, so it means two real solutions. All right. All right, so with that, you guys can try eight and nine. All right, next up here, we're going to solve these with any method. Um, so I always try factoring first. So for factoring, we need to get one side to zero. Uh, now we're going to think of two numbers that multiply to negative four and add to negative two. Um, however, in this case, there are no numbers that work out for that. And so that means I just switch over to quadratic formula. So that's going to be x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, our b is negative 2. So I put negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 4 all over 2 times 1. Uh, so that negative negative 2 turns into a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of four, and then uh, negative four times one is negative four, times negative four is actually a positive 16 right there. That's all over two. And then I'll go ahead and uh, do that addition right there. That would be the square root of 20. I don't know the square root of 20, so I'm gonna break down. Five and four would be two and two. So I have twin twos there. So we're gonna write it as two plus or minus two rad five, since we have that loaner five, all over two. And then we'll reduce all this together by dividing all of those by 2, which would give me 1 plus or minus radical 5. Technically, that's over 1, but usually we just leave that off and call it that. All right, next up, number 11. Once again, I would get one side to 0, so I'm going to subtract 5n and subtract 3. Uh, so I get 2n squared minus 5n minus 3. So now we're going to do our x here. So thinking of two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. So that would be negative 6 and positive 1. However, I do need to use, so this factoring does work on this one. I won't have to use quadratic formula, but I do need to use my grouping here since I have my 2n squared. And so the first group, uh, I can take out a 2n, which leaves me with uh, n minus 3. And then the second group, I can only take out a plus 1, which will leave me n minus 3 as well. Uh, and so then my parentheses are 2n plus 1 for the stuff outside, and then n minus 3 for the matching parentheses. And that's all equal to 0. So I do need to split this up, set it equal to 0. So this one would say n equals 3. And then this one, 2n plus 1 equals 0. I subtract a 1. So 2n equals negative 1. Divide by 2, and n equals negative 1 half. Two answers there. 
All right, next step number 12, once again, I would get one side to zero, so I'm going to uh, add the 4x over and subtract the 2, so we'll write it like this. And I see all of these are divisible by 2, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 2x squared plus uh, 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now we'll try to factor it with a times c, multiplying to negative 2 and adding the 2. However, no numbers work for that, so that means I'm going to switch over into a quadratic formula. Uh, so this is going to be x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this will be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. And then this is uh, 8 times negative 1 is plus 8 all over 4. So simplify it some more. Negative 2 plus or minus uh, the square root of 12 over 4. And we'll break this down. 4 and 3 is 2 and 2. So twin 2s would give me x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2 rad 3 all over 4. Now we'll just reduce it so we get negative 1 plus or minus radical 3 all over 2 still since we just divided by 2. All right, I'm just going to finish up with these uh, last two here, uh, or I'll do number 16. So uh, for this one, I see that there's no b value. And whenever there's no b value, you can use square roots to solve. So this is kind of the only time I can do this. So I get p squared equals 45. And I take the square root. Um, now I don't know, so it's p equals plus or minus something. I don't know the square root of 45, so I'm going to break it down as 9 and 5, which is 3 and 3. So this will just be 3 rad 5. But since I created that square root, I do need that plus or minus in front of it.